All right, hi everybody, it's me. And today we're going to be talking about meta and PVP meta. Now, I guess before we start the video and get too deeply into it, this is a JP perspective, not a global perspective. I know that global does have uh, bonuses to the vision cards that they have that are not available on JP. You also have some characters, Aster, that um, we don't have as well. And all of that is fine. So before we really get too deep into this video, I want to say, first of all, this is going to be a long video, probably. Uh, secondly, I am probably going to lose my train of thought at least a few times. I'll try and keep on track. And I guess thirdly, uh, with the third anniversary coming up, there is a huge chance uh, that a lot of this will change in the next little bit. So why am I doing it? Well, I want to try this video, uh, see what how people feel about it, and um, maybe continue it in the future if people do like it. Uh, because I think AP meta snapshots are not necessary are something that I do uh, not enough of, and uh, maybe more focused videos would help me also kind of get into the meta. So let's discuss about each of the elements where I would place it currently on JP. And I'm only going to give generalities in the sense of popularity, uh, as well as uh, not only popularity, but just general strength based on the characters. Obviously maps, changing the map can very much change a battle. And with the addition, and this is the one kind of new piece of specific news tonight, is this. Uh, this was posted in the banner news for JP, showing Pren as well as all the other characters from another story. And this is really interesting because it also effectively confirms that the Void characters will be coming uh, probably fairly soon uh we i was thinking that they might be a delay after we got done our next grouping like these three warrior of the crystals but now it seems possibly like they might we might just get uh like six months in a row of these characters we'll have to wait and see exactly how the scheduling shakes out but uh with a water character first what looks like earth second and raf Dark being third, and then the void characters. Anything that comes in anniversary in terms of upgrades or new elements or dual elements could vastly shift the meta. So we'll take a look at the meta after all of that stuff happens. Let's take a look pre third anniversary. So we have a bunch of different elements to go through tonight. So we're going to get barely into it now that I've done the intro that's taken up only three minutes. So let's go across the board starting from the dark element. And the dark element on JP I would say is dropped in popularity. I would say it's on the lower end of the popularity scale, which kind of makes sense. There hasn't really been any super dark character in a while on JP. Like Dark Fina slash Majin Fina was probably one of the last ones and really did do a lot for mages back at the time. But since then, it, the dark element has been really, really quiet and really kind of waiting for a new character to pick up the slack. And dark magic, probably a pretty good place for it to go, providing that Celeste never makes her general return. But in generalities of how dark actually fares, dark feels a little bit more on the generally okay side. I think this is an element that's just kind of waiting to pounce back into the top. But what a lot of group, what a lot of newer characters in other elements are doing is just particularly stronger right now. So I'd say that Dark is probably hovering around the 50% mark. Probably could take its main spot back if it gets some really good characters and vision cards into the future that kind of push it a harder than it already is but dark as an element feels kind of just okay uh right now and being okay is fine provided you get to live to see another day 
In terms of where I expect the dark element to go into the near future, Reagan has primarily been a dark elemental character. We do have Halloween characters coming up, which could always be fit pretty well into the dark element. And for whatever reason, my music has stopped. Harder. The thing is, is that dark could end up getting Reagan. Reagan has a lot of possibilities of being fire, ice, or dark. It seems with Rafu or Raf coming out very shortly, though, that it's probably unlikely, as that would be a heck of a lot of elemental overlap. And two new characters in a, and specifically high cost characters in a new element would probably push it, pushing it just a little too hard. The dark element, I do think, will get a particularly big benefit from this. The question is, is how it can measure up against certain other teams, and mage teams might just be what we need. Celeste doesn't have a particularly good chance at shutting this down again, uh, especially this element. So I have high expectations that the dark element will return to top form probably pretty soon, as we're going to talk about later with just different elemental matchups. This is probably the one that I think has the highest success of getting back into top meta again. Next up is light and light is well it's it's kind of in a position right now on JP where it feels like effectively most elements can be dead. Light evasion on JP has not felt like it's been in the best place while now feeling pretty weak with especially ice sharpshooters just having such good matchups into them whatever the light element has been trying recently just hasn't felt particularly that amazing and with some of the more recent addition characters on jp who have gotten you know ex's such as ramsa or hope doesn't feel like the light element is really pulling on a specific great direction right now you have essentially a lot of the characters going evasion and a lot of characters just being pretty tanky or generally good but overall the evasion part feels pretty weak right now so the light element feels pretty weak and i kind of feel like unless they really want to push evasion again or really want to uh, give light a new direction i don't feel right now like light is particularly going to be that strong into the near future it also doesn't have seemingly any uh warrior of the crystal event characters potentially coming in maybe at christmas we see a light based character but seasonals have yet to really long term perform amazingly well to the point that they are as mentionable as some of the other characters we're going to talk about in this video but yeah light is in the lower half and probably will stay in the lower half, barring some incredible character that we just don't know about yet or a brand new direction take it in next up is water and water ever since lightning has shown up and a lot of the strong lightning characters have been showing up it does feel like the whole Celeste Astoria thing has kind of rode off into the sunset. Between Majin Fina pushing out Runic and just Astoria and that Runic combination being a little bit too far, like just away, it doesn't feel overly impressive into a lot of different matchups. And that's really kind of the problem. If Celeste was to get some kind of a really nice upgrade into a MA2, I think we could probably talk about this being a real combination, but obviously with Pren coming in just a few days, the water element could see either a new direction or quite possibly just a more successful direction. With Snack also being a water type evasion character, and Pren potentially having that with an evasion based class in pub, we could see it end up being a kind of water evasion attempt. But again, evasion doesn't feel that strong, so unless we're getting a lot of support for it, I just don't see it happening here. As for Pren's identity, that's so close that I don't really want to talk about it too much. The water based characters could show up either at Halloween or Christmas, likely possibly I should say 
uh, you know, ignoring the fact that there was a water Xmas character already in the one. Maybe this year I'll even finish her. But yeah, water does seem poised to potentially get multiple new characters, either in the higher or lower cost, if Reagan does end up being blind to fire, which does seem pretty plausible as he has been a fire character in the past. Water overall just doesn't feel particularly strong right now, feeling in the lower half of the, my bracket, uh, but does end up feeling like it could potentially get there. A Warrior of the Crystal is always almost, well, almost always notable in being a kind of meta shifter. Joom is still incredibly good. Barris is still incredibly good. Astoria is still incredibly good. And this is the first element to get to Warrior of the Crystal. I know Astoria is not technically the Warrior of Crystal of Water, but they are to effectively Warrior of the Crystal level of power. And two characters, this is the first element to get two of these. So that could be, it could be that water, even this week, will end up being a return to form, really destroying it. If there, I was to say something that would truly benefit water as a element, it would be getting a dual cost vision card, or sorry, a 90 cost vision card that is both earth and water, giving it a good matchup into lightning and therefore potentially just, you know, getting there against its worst element in the same way that wind can kind of combo with fire. But that's not where we are right now, so you know. Next up is lightning, and lightning is still probably in my higher half of the meta. Uh, no, it is definitely higher half. It just has so many good characters and so much flexibility as to how it deals with arena and now limited cost events. Slime was a really good get for the lightning element because it gives it so much potential to stay well and truly below cost limitations with a fairly decent character, either for just, you know, taking a brunt beat of the damage while the other characters do damage or just himself potentially getting in two legs. Between Cloud, Orlando, Lightning, Charlotte, Swimsuit Helena, or Summer Helena, and Ibarra now on GP, there's a lot of flexibility as to how these teams get built. Also, Skahal did get an upgrade recently, which makes him particularly hard to kill. Really, Lightning as an element does have uh, just particular, just really, really good matchups in a lot of places and can sometimes just shift in just enough to get through a lot of battles that you don't think it would be able to get through. So yeah, the lightning element, uh, particularly strong. As for whether I think it will continue to be strong, that is kind of up in the air. Really, I mean, the question is where are we getting our new lightning guaranteed next? Via collaboration, via limited event or seasonal kind of unit. All of that, I guess, we'll have to wait and see, but Lightning has gotten so many units recently that it feels like it might go back into hibernation for new units for a little bit. And if that's the case, with the combination of a new ranged Earth Gunner, that could be quite terrifying. If he gets large AoEs and high range, Lightning might have a much more difficult time. Brings us, of course, to the Earth Element. The Earth Element is probably one that I would put lower to middle of the actual spectrum. I mean, the fact is that Earth has gotten a fair bunch of benefits. Uh, for instance, not finished for me, but I know quite a few Earth teams that are running Miraga uh, with all the buffs and stuff. They've been getting collection quests and MA2s. All of this is pushed him into being quite useful for them again as a bonus unit as just being a member of an earth element and with plenty of lightning teams out there earth does have some good matchups to get into and with Mashari and Oberyn, Noctis and the like there are still enough good units the real question here for earth in the future is just how good this new earth gunner is going to be as we just talked about with all the lightning teams out there, it definitely feels like a really good time to prey on them. If a matter of fact, it would have been nicer 
sooner the better kind of thing. If this does, uh, Earth does become incredibly powerful because of a new character, because it does feel like it's teetering on the verge of it, then Earth could end up being really, really, really great and could let water back in too. So Earth and water success feels almost a little bit tied to one another, but um, Earth kind of has also uh, another incredibly popular element to get through. And this is, if not 100%, it feels pretty well like a 99% easy call to say that this is the best element in the entire JP side right now. Wind is just good and I would say borderline too good. And it's a combination of really three things. This girl, this girl, and this girl. Now, these three characters... These three things really have pushed him. You might be saying, Umbra, why not? Why is Joom not in there? Joom and actually the third position of this like unit side of this composition is a little bit flexible and a little bit variable. If you think about the fact that you can pretty easily swap out Joom with Mon to make your ice matchup better uh, with very little consequence, because of the inclusion of Dark Tetra Selfied in the 90 cost dual elemental vision card, it does make this particularly really good. And since water has kind of fallen out, well, hey, guess what? You might just be uh, so well if you do not have the right characters in the right positions and it goes the right way, because wind is just pretty dirty. You look at Glassy, she is capable for, I guess I should mention, for globalers who are not incredibly aware of why this character is good. It comes down to a lot of stuff, from her counter being a complete physical and magical evader, uh, to just having a lot of resistances, and particularly AoE resistances, which is good, as a lot of stuff is AoE. Uh, able to uh, dispel guts auto revive decrease wind resistance reduce her own damage taken for multiple turns and dispel all buffs haste and all barriers classy is the full meal deal so to speak then you combine that with sadali sadali who is more than capable of a character as well dealing a different magic or different damage type in uh, magic makes it kind of hard to counter both damage types that seem to be so effective here. Sadali also has piercing damage and effect CT can buff allies, uh, cancel activation, healing, and of course has a limit burst with a, one of the worst status effects to go up against the entire game. This combination of the two things plus the new human physical killer that allows it to potentially partner incredibly well with fire does put ice into a little bit of a weird position. Again, it could change in the next week. With the inclusion of a brand new physical water character, if Bren is an incredibly decent character, then the wind fire advantage kind of disappears. Ice has a really good matchup again, and it's just about protecting against the status effects and killing the units before they get close to you on a big map. All of that point potentially points to just being okay, but this trio right now on JP is probably one of the most effective combos just because even if it does go up against ice range, if it does find a way to survive over, which it can, based on hate reduction, based on tanks, and based on a lot of stuff that can just go right, once it gets in and deals status effects, guts, removes all of this stuff that is potentially beneficial, it can just be soul crushing and heck, even my ice range team, which we'll look at in a bit of a second here, it does struggle sometimes with the wind element. As I've always said, if the if an element can beat its counter, it's probably a little too good. So next up is ice, and ice is definitively the counter for wind and the one thing keeping wind from probably rolling over everything as Wind just has good matchups almost everywhere, even in its losing matchups, um, potentially being able to push wins. 
Ice has a lot of flexibility as to where it goes. It has a lot of damage, it has a lot of range, it has one of the best healer supports in the entire game. That's Barris, by the way, in case you were not aware. It does potentially have some really nasty status effects, and it has some cool, no pun intended, effects of removing bravery through units such as Zoma. But Alaya and Eliza are the really the two big units that are carrying this element. And Ice is definitely in the top. It has really good matchups a lot of the time, especially when you add in, you know, the tank and range combo. Uh, Snow plus Bellus is just really hard to get rid of. And throwing in a powerful damaging base character like Alaya or Eliza is more than enough to get you all the way there. Or potentially just dealing AoE range magic with Zoma and Bellus can also get there. Ice is really strong, and the one thing that will knock it down is whether or not the fire element finds success. And that kind of depends where Reagan is. <laughs> I feel like Reagan is a lot of a question mark. Uh, so I expect, sorry, really just to finish up, I think Ice will continue to be strong, provided that fire stays weak and continues to do the attempted evasion thing. So let's jump really quickly to fire. And fire is in the lower part of my expectations. It really only had a lot of success the follow the previous weeks for a couple of reasons. First, Bizarro came out, so he was a bonus unit, so a lot of people were running fire element teams anyway. Secondly, the map bonuses on for those fire elemental teams were good enough to push fire evasion, assuming that you had Pizarro and not only Pizarro maxed, but Valentine Salir max. And the last thing was that there were just, you know, so many ice teams. Uh, wait, I might have doubled over on that. Uh, basically, fire was able to deal a fair amount with the new human killer card, uh, pushing it through Dark Tetra Selfied as well, and potentially getting some unite um, uh, success with the wind element. B big thing, big takeaway is that fire has been conditionally strong, but overall still feels incredibly weak. And that is due to limited time vision cards and limited time also characters in a sense, just keeping the fire element fairly locked down. If this is one of the biggest suggestions that fire will be Reagan's main element because fire really needs something extra to push it a little bit further. Right now, it just doesn't have enough to super get there. And if we're going on the continuing downscaling of going from, what was it? Alaya into... Maybe not. Um, honestly, the fire element, I think, really needs a ton of help to actually get to the point will it be really good. And with the water element getting a new 100 cost character, I think it'll be even more difficult to get there because if fire does start popping its little head up, well, there's a new water fist girl in town that can ruin things. So, yeah, I mean, this is all like subjective into the future as to whether it will be because we could see void characters, dual elemental characters, more dual elemental vision cards or the light kind of shifting where things are good currently it's thunder hp and magic up which really pushes the thunder element giving the thunder element a bonus but again ice <laughs> has still been successful for me this week so only for me i guess but yeah um I guess the last thing that I really want to talk about in this video before I completely lose train of thought or point of this is elemental perception or percentages. What elemental elemental teams am I really seeing in arena this week? I'm slacking off a bit, but high percentage I would say is wind and lightning. They would be the two elements that I see the most frequently uh, going up the ladder to about 1000 rank, 1000th rank. Uh, some most weeks uh, in the previous weeks there's a lot of wind elemental teams 
and a lot of lightning elemental teams. There's also a good number of earth, ice, and uh, fire uh, recently. With water, dark, and light feeling the most underrepresented. Of course, fire being incredibly represented because of Pizarro recently and potentially capitalizing ice elf. But yeah, a little bit of a look at the JP meta snapshot. If you're really, really, really wondering what is the potential future of global barring any global units or units that come slightly early, honestly, wind feels kind of like the best bet. It's just incredibly strong right now. And the question is, to end this video, what would it take to knock wind out of the first place spot? Because, sure, Ice has a good matchup against it, but if the status effects go the wrong way, then it really kind of doesn't have a good matchup. So, in all honesty, uh, innate status effect protection would go a long way to changing it. Remo re just removing Sadali, but honestly, I think if another element truly wanted to challenge it, it would have to have something that Glassy just couldn't affect remove like a new type of barrier or something that is just really uh, that glassy would have a hard time removing yeah um just wind ice and lightning right now are probably my top three elements and i think that that will probably continue in the future but i really kind of hope it won't with the addition of the third anniversary i do oh shoot that's the wrong one this image Nope, nope, that's not the right one. That's the right one. With the addition of potentially of the Void Elemental characters coming late this year into early next year, as well as Anniversary potentially being a new source of power creep or new systems or the like, uh, which I do feel we are overdue for. And I do think that people should prepare for that kind of announcement. Uh, I do think that there could be quite a bit of open room for things to change. We're starting to see a lot more uh, specific resistances and specific evasions, like evasion specifically coded against shooting type weapon, shooting type characters. That kind of stuff could turn the meta quite a bit on its head, but as it stands right now, uh, ice, wind, and lightning, probably the best of the best, the best. And uh, we'll see what happens with Earth and Dark eventually coming next. Thanks for watching. See you next time.